Well, Heat fans, I didn't have to expect to make this video when I just got home from the office after the Heat beat the Pistons uh, 118 to 110 to go above 500 by nine games. But unfortunately, Josh Richardson is out for the season. It is reported by Barry Jackson of the Herald that, well, he's going to have shoulder surgery and is expected to miss the rest of the year. That is quite the bummer. And... Listen, that's why Patty Mills was signed or earlier today off the buyout market. It kind of stinks because Richardson was playing really, really well off before his injury because he had that hot start to the season and then he played pretty bad and he actually got DNP'd against the Knicks on a Saturday in New York and then came back after that game and was playing with his hair on fire. And it's really a bummer and kind of a somber end to a night where the Heat picked up their second win in a row. And it, it just stinks that we have to talk about Jarich being out for the year. So I want everyone to get down below and spam those zeros for Josh Richardson. Hopefully he'll be able to come back better than ever. Obviously it was a second round pick for Miami um, back in 2015 with the Justice Winslow class and had a pretty good tenure with the Heat before being dealt in the Jimmy Butler signing trade. Ultimately returned back to the 305 this offseason. And he's now done for the year, which really, really stinks. Now, contractually, this is very interesting for Josh Sim because he has a player option for next season. And the question I am going to ask, it was a 1 plus 1 PO for next year on a relatively vet men deal, so it's like damn near close to like vet men. Did Josh Richardson play well enough prior to the shoulder injury to garner another spot? Or will Josh Richardson opt into that player O and be with the Miami Heat next roster or next season on practically the same deal in terms of money wise? I think that is the more intriguing storyline here surrounding Josh Richardson for the long term. But I think for the rest of the video, I do, do want to focus on the short term this season and what Patty Mills will bring and how this Heat team will go the rest of the year without Josh Richardson in the lineup. And I do also want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well as, listen, we just worked a full nine-hour day, um, did a watch party, was hanging out with most of y'all for three hours, and then we had to hop off, come home, I hit a little snack late, and then guess here we are making another video about the Miami Heat. So join the channel today because no matter when it is or where it is, I'm going to have you covered surrounding the latest on the Miami Heat. All right. And even though DeLon Wright didn't play today, I think him and Patty Mills are going to have to have more of an impact for this Heat team going forward. Because, listen, the Heat maybe don't have to rely on them when it comes to the postseason, but I think there was some optimism that Richardson was going to return this season. Obviously, when you separate your shoulder, anything can happen. And if you do elect to have surgery on it, you're likely done for the year. That's kind of the battle that the Knicks are facing with Julius Randle as well, as he had a very similar injury. Ironically, he got hurt in that game when Richardson was a DNP on Saturday in the Big Apple. So I think the question is who will fill the role that Richardson was playing as that third ball handler behind Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero prior to Tyler Hero being injured and the way the Heat have really adjusted at least currently with Hero out is you've seen a lot of Jimmy handling the rock a lot of Caleb Martin Nikola Jovic like against the Pistons at the end of the first quarter early second the Heat were rocking with a lineup that consisted of Nikola Jovic Jaime Hawkes Jr. Caleb Martin Haywood Highsmith and Orlando Robinson like Spo although was against the worst team in the east put faith in Jovic Hawkes and Martin to be the ball handlers and initiators on the offensive end of the floor over having a guard like DeLon Wright in the lineup. So I think when you think about Wright's impact, Patty Mills, what will they bring to the table for the rest of the season? I don't think it's going to be that much, if we're going to be honest, because if DeLon Wright can't get minutes now, how would he get minutes when Tyler Hero returns? 
how will Patty Mills get minutes over DeLon Wright when Tyler Hero turns? Like, these are the questions we have to ask ourselves. And we'll talk more in depth here to close out today's video. But shout out to Prize Picks. They sponsored our live show earlier today. Um, if you're watching this Tuesday night or Wednesday morning yesterday on our Pistons watch party, my picks actually did not hit, unfortunately, because. Jalen Duren and Bam Adebayo did not combine for more than 21 rebounds. That was a shocker, but they allow you to do those very cool things like combining players matching up against each other on one specific category. And they allow you to also do it with multiple sports. Like you could have a, let's say, Jimmy Butler more than threes combined with Mookie Betts doubles, right? Like you can do those type of combinations on a daily basis, which makes playing daily fantasy so much more fun. And that's why I play them on a daily basis because they're the most innovative app and they are offering us a great deal of a first deposit match up to $100. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS to get that first deposit match up to $100. Also, you can download the app on your app store and input that CLNS code to get the first deposit match up to $100. All right, back to Heat basketball here because the guard rotation for Miami, it's just like, it's going to be Terry, it's going to be Tyler, and well, that might be it. And I kind of alluded to it before we talked about prize picks there, is like, what makes us as fans and what makes the team believe, believe, I should say, that if DeLon Wright cannot get minutes right now when Tyler Hero is not playing, that he would earn minutes or Patty Mills would earn minutes when Tyler Hero returns because you were likely going to stagger those two whenever Tyler comes back. Whether Hero enters the starting lineup, which is a different conversation for a different day. But either way, like Hero and Terry aren't going to always be on the floor together because one of them's going to come out and one of them's going to stay on to be the initiator and the quote unquote point guard for the Miami Heat. Now, Eric Spolster likes to play a lot of positionless basketball, as we see with Hakez, Caleb, Jovic. That lineup is there is no true point guard, and I would say there's no even true shooting guard as well, because I'd consider Caleb a forward, Hayward's a forward, Jovic is a forward, Hakez is a forward, and Orlando is a center. So there is no fear from the Heat coaching staff to go away from a traditional guard lineup, which is why I don't think Patty Mills and DeLon Wright will get a lot of PT. Um... I just think you're going to go to more of a forward-heavy lineup and your two quote-unquote guards will be Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier when he returns from his foot injury. And you're just going to rotate those two guys in and out of the lineup and on the off chance both of them are off the floor at the same time. You're probably going to go to like a Jimmy Butler, Caleb Martin, Jaime Jaquez, Nikola Jovic, hell, even Bam Adebayo led lineup in terms of bringing the ball up the floor and getting the heat into their offense. But that's what also makes the heat so dangerous in their own right is that you have to be prepared for everyone to move the ball and be in specific spots. They don't have the prototypical, oh, this guy's the point guard. He's got to have the ball in his hands all the time. No, it's actually not the case. The best player for the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, is most effective when he's cutting on the baseline and cutting off ball. Like, when Bam Adebayo is at his best, he's playing as the hub at the at that free throw line at the top of the key, facilitating for Duncan, getting Jimmy, and then obviously working for himself off that as well. Like That's what makes the Heat so dangerous to defend and what makes them so lethal in the Eastern Conference is that you don't have to key in on specific matchups. You have the term positionless basketball gets thrown around a lot, but it is most prevalent with the Miami Heat in the way Eric Spolster coaches his team. So... That's kind of my thoughts on the guard depth. Now, also, other than uh, someone who can handle the rock, what the Heat are losing uh, is someone who really started to shoot the ball well. Like this season, prior to that injury, he was averaging 9.9 .9 points per game. Josh Richardson, that is. Shooting 44% from the field, 35% from three. But that was really coming on as late. Like the week and two weeks prior to him separating that shoulder, he was shooting 40% from three. He was also arguably your best free throw shooter as he had a 94.4% free throw percentage before he got hurt. So um, I would say there would be a big impact offensively, but if we're going to be honest and be open here and have a discussion, Josh Richardson wasn't even that good defensively like he was when he was with the Heat the first stint around. Like as a 30-year-old, he just doesn't have that same lateral movement to stay in front of some of these other guards inside the association. So the defense isn't that big of a hit. You're losing a spacer and a creator but 
listen, the Heat have played good basketball over the past two and a half weeks when Jay Rich got hurt. So I'm not going to say he's the reason that the Heat are playing good, that he's not in the lineup, but I wouldn't say it's end-all, be-all that Josh Vincent's out for the season. It's just why you saw Patty Mills get signed. DeLon Wright added to this lineup. A lot of people wanted a big man. They brought in guard depth just to be case, like, if Hero is out for the year or Rozier gets injured again, like, well, then now you're going to actually have to rely on Patty Mills and DeLon Wright. So that's why they brought those guys in for depth because Richardson's injury wasn't good, and who knows what happened to Rozier and Hero for the rest of the year. That's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope everyone has a late night, a good night, and a good Wednesday. Uh, I'll have a video tomorrow. I'll have a video on Thursday, and then we'll be live again on Friday for a game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. So make sure you sub to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. I actually thought that this was a season-ending injury when they signed Patty Mills earlier today, and I said that on Twitter. So if you want the latest around the Miami Heat, follow me there. Sub to the channel.